Hey everybody, I'm Steve Heitzecker. I'm a senior instructor, Pro Tools expert producer at Paramine. Today I want to demonstrate a couple ideas on how we would hook up the awesome MIDI fighter into Reason to drive Kong for our good friends at DJ Tech Tools. All right, so when I got the MIDI fighter, I thought, you know, it's really cool looking since I play a lot of games, um, but how's it really gonna work? I'm not a DJ, uh, producer, composer, um, and I'm thinking, you know, it's got 16 triggers. I know Kong has 16 pads. Seems like a pretty good relationship. What I wanna do today is just show you how to hook it up, how to actually trigger Kong, and then real quickly go through Kong and uh, how to make like a custom drum kit, uh, which I think is a great idea. So first thing is we're going to declare this to reason. So that's command comma in the reason prefs. And we see in the control surface tab, uh, there's nothing in here. Now, if we hit auto detect surfaces, it will not find it. So what we need to do is go down to add, and we're gonna do this manually. So we add, we go up to manufacturer. We do not yet see this listed, so we go other. And then this is where the magic happens. We come down to the MIDI input, and uh, we have a rather uh, sophisticated and um, comprehensive studio. So lots of controllers. So we have to find the MIDI fighter, see it, we select it, we hit OK, it auto enables it, declares it, green check mark good. We can now close this window and we are going to go to the sequencer real quick because in reason, the device that we're going to trigger from our controller, whatever it may be, has to be the selected device. So you can see that I've selected Kong, F6 back to the rack window, we give it a little try, absolutely working. So once again, the MIDI fighter has 16 triggers. Kong has 16 pads in the pad area. One of the things that we do have to set up in the MIDI fighter to make this work, though, is we have to select this button. And this button triggers C1 from this pad. The reason we have to do that is because uh, Kong utilizes the C1 kick drum or the lowest pad to be triggered by C1 just like Redrum does. So of course this technique would work for Redrum as well as Kong. Um, it's an old school Roland protocol for drum programming and a lot of people have just kind of kept that throughout the years. If we don't do that though, it will change the octave so the MIDI note number will change and we will not be triggering the pads in Kong. It will be octaves above where you think it would be and we can't change it in Kong it's one of the things you can you can actually remap controllers to almost every parameter in reason in any of the devices except for the pad area in Kong so it's going to be C1 and up that's 16 half steps for those MIDI note numbers so make sure that it's triggering C1 here you will hit this pad or this trigger and you will see that the bottom left pad goes and then we're good all right, so a little bit about Kong. Uh, three sections. There is a pad section, which comprises the 16 pads. Now, you can have 16 separate sounds, or you can actually copy-paste by right-clicking and maybe put the same sound on multiple pads. Uh, if you're not using the awesome MIDI fighter, that's actually a cool way to be able to trigger one sound from MIDI keys to get some speed behind that. Uh, the pad section also has some really cool link mute capabilities so you can choose multiple pads, group them together uh, for so that we hit one trigger and it triggers four or five sounds for big sound, uh, do alternates with the alt uh, groupings, really cool stuff when you get under the hood with this. Um, you can also sample directly into each pad. So how does this really all work? We have to go to section two, which is the drum control panel section to see. Each pad, as you'll see, has its own, sorry, as I actually have to mouse on that to do it, has its own channel strip. Now it's called the drum control panel. I think of it more as a channel strip per each pad, right? So when I click here, I see that it's, you know, bass drum one, but really it's holding some sort of a sample or a Rex device, physical modeling, analog modeling. We're not seeing that quite yet, but it's also holding channel strip settings. So levels, pans, tones, sins and returns, pitch, some decay, not a lot of settings, but it would be, you know, like the remote control for the actual drum itself, which lives down in the drum and effects area. So now we see all of Kong. So leg bone connected to the thigh bone, so to speak in this, I click a pad, you can see that it changes to drum two, an associated preset 
of mini if I click in there. And then what it's telling the preset is go get this particular drum and the associated two insert effects that come with it. So that's a channel strip and it's a pretty effective one. Um, think about some of the things you could do with this. If you were to, say, program up the best snare you've ever had, and physical modeling is a really great way to control snares because you get realistic parameters of control, almost as if it was a real snare that you could reprogram um, instead of having to work with a sample that's already been recorded. I love physical modeling. So let's say you tweak this, you come to the effects area, put a compressor on the snare, and you're like, all right, this is a really cool sound. I want to save it. Why would you do that? Well, let's say that you're in a completely different song. You've got a great drum kit going, but you're like, eh, the snare is not the greatest. And you remember that you saved the snare, and that would be with the quaint little floppy disk icon, into your general folder where you save your, your drums in Reason. You could load that into any Kong kit, right? So the difference would be, once again, up here, this is the patch browser, and my patch would be, of course, Giants Win the Series. I'm not sure how that got named that. Um, but a patch would then say, okay, I'm going to load all the sounds for the 16 pads with all the different samples or the different types of synthesis, the different effects. Uh, patches are very small because they point to things, right? Now, down here, an individual pad preset would be a single drum, right? So you can save them both ways. And I suggest you save them both ways because certainly, you know, one of the reasons I'm even doing this is so that you can make a custom kit and then you would save that kit to be used later. Uh, but you can get a lot of different elements out of this. All right, so we click a pad. It says drum one. It shows which drum is being used. Now, we see dot AIF and dot wave, so we know that those are probably going to call up samplers, but a dot drum means that it could not only just have the actual sound maker, but it's going to save the associated effects. And when we hear this drum, it's definitely got a compressor and a filter on it, right? That's a pretty big sound off of those samples. Um, so let's look at the actual uh, sound making devices. And one of the things that's so great about Kong, it's not just a sampler. It's not just a synthesizer. It is sampler, synthesizer, physical modeling, and a Rex player. So I like to think that if an MPC, an 808, and Native Instruments battery had a love child, it would be Kong. Um, I, I think it's that awesome, and I think it's comprised of all those elements. So let's look. So sampler we're seeing right now. It's got a Rex player, so not only can we trigger slices, we can trigger whole loops by hitting one of the triggers here, right? So you just you would assign Rex to one of the pads, and then you would trigger that pad, and you control the length of the loop and how it reacts, reverse it, all those things. Very cool stuff. Uh, physical modeling, like I said, one of my favorite ways to actually control sound. You see on the kick, there's a shell level, tone, beater levels, really changes the nature of the sound. And then we have analog modeling, which is, of course, the 808 with all the synth parameters. And in analog modeling, the kick, the hi-hat, the snare, the tom, physical modeling, tom, snare, and bass drum. And, of course, Rex and the samplers are whatever you want because it means the entire Rex library can come and actually be triggered from Kong, meaning triggered by one of the cool arcade-style buttons on MIDI Fighter, uh, or a sample, which, of course, could be literally anything because what's not been sampled on this planet. So go back over it. We went into reasons of preferences. We had to manually add the MIDI fighter. Then we made sure that we were triggering from C1. We tested it. Right, We found that it worked, and then we went in and started looking at the pads, the drum control panel, the different sound makers. So what I definitely always tell people is get into, you know, if you, if you want to load even a preset from Kong, start clicking the pads, looking at the associated drum channel strip, and then make it your own. You know, change the presets or just come down here and, and manually change, like, I want this to be a snare drum. You can do it either way. You can either load through the presets or you can just come down here and choose a different drum so that basically your kit is your own kit. And then save some of these if you want through the save here, but definitely save your entire kit so that you can use it later. Um, like I said, the MIDI fighter is really cool because of the speed that it lets you play with.
I love the way that that triggers. I'm kind of addicted to that at this point. All right, so hopefully this helps you guys. Big props to uh, DJ Tech Tools. Love the site, and uh, hope you guys make some good music with this.